Okay, so one of the things I mentioned was that uh, I'm going to be using these Sierra Tipped Match Kings, 69 grain, and it's been a few years since I loaded this up, and I, I, like I've told you, I've put a lot of rounds down this barrel. It still shoots just great, though. But one of the things, since I'm now going to be shooting for severe accuracy at long distances, not just... You know, an occasional great shot, but I, I, want, I need to be able to group 20 good shots together. Um, I want to double check my seating depth that I use. And I want to make sure that maybe I haven't burned up a little bit of that barrel. And maybe I need to seat my bullets a little deeper to make up for what I've burned up in that barrel. Basically chasing that barrel with the bullet. So I may need to make my bullet a bit longer just to keep up with the accuracy that I've had in the past. Um, but I just want to double check that right now and I thought I would show you this Hornady tool. And I'll have to go look up. Anyway, it's an, we call it an Ogive, um, a bullet Ogive. Uh, tool. Anyway, you can go buy any caliber, or a lot of the calibers that are, especially normal calibers, some Wildcats, but not too many. Anyway, this is the 223. What they've done is they've taken a normal piece of brass. The neck is, is what it would be like if you just shot it, so the bullet will slide in and out of it easily, but not too easy. And then they've drilled out the back end of it here so that it fits on the end of this tool. And then it seats down into a spot. You've got a screw knob down here and this little rod in the middle, plastic rod here, can be moved up and down. So what you do, there's a flat spot in the uh, plastic there. And if you take the bullet that you're looking for, looking at, to use, and you stick it in the end here, you see that it falls all the way down in there. I mean, you can move it up a little bit and tighten this back down. Anyway, I'm going to seat this in the gun as far as the cartridge will go. Then I'm going to unloosen the knob and push that bullet until it hits the lands. And at that point, I will lock it down, pull it out, and I will measure my ogive. Okay, so the difference between overall length and ogive is that ogive is a certain point on the bullet in a somewhere like in here. And the other half of this tool is right here attached to my uh my meter um, and you can buy different sizes this is the 22 so that's the go the ogive size right there so I can load ammo that basically goes to the exact same spot every time and the o overall length might change slightly because some of these bullets the tips of them are deformed or just different issues can arise. So you're not going to be as accurate seating that bullet in the exact same location by going on the overall length of the bullet. You're going to be better off knowing the ogive where that, ra that first rounded point when the bullet starts to move in is and measuring from there to here. And that's what this tool allows me to do. And I'll show you here in just a sec. All right, so I've got my bullet. I've got it sitting there. That's going to be smaller than what it can go. So I am going to slide that in there. Make sure that cartridge is good and seated. That brass. I'm going to unloosen the pin here, and then I'm going to push this until that bullet hits the rifling. Alright, now that it's there, I'm going to hold everything tight 
and I'm going to tighten down my screw. Now when I pull it out, the bullet typically gets stuck in there because it's it hits those that rifling and it kind of the rifling kind of grabs the bullet. So I have to go grab a cleaning rod. There it goes. All right. Pull that out of the way. My bullet fell down in here. Push it back. All right. So if you look at that bullet closely, you can see some marks right there where it hit the rifling. So you know you got it all the way, all the way in there. But now if you take this where you set it and you put the bullet back in it, that is how deep it is from the end of your bullet to where your bullet hits the rifling. So that is, if you wanted to load your rifle to where you just touch the rifling, which isn't recommended by manufacturers or most, most people, um, that's right where you would want it. And you would measure that. And with that over there, Put your flat part here, and now my O guide on this one into the into the rifling is 1.633. All right. Now they say you shouldn't trust that first measurement. You should do three or four of them and then average them. So let's do it again. Second measurement. Oh, you know what? That first measurement wasn't any good because I didn't zero after putting this on. All right, so now we're at zero. That makes more sense because that was awful short. All right, 1.941. 1.941. All right, I'm going to loosen this. Pull it back a little bit, tighten it back up. Go another time. 1.941. Loosen it up. Push it into the lands. Tighten it up. Alright. Pull it out of there. See how close our two measurements are. 1.941 was the first one. This one is 1.941. All right, so I really don't want to dig through all my data for this rifle. I keep a book on every rifle. Um, some of them are just notebooks. Some of them are uh, binders. And some um, some rifles have both, um, depending on how old they are. Okay, after further review of uh, a bunch of my data, I can't find where I ever documented what the ogive was on this the first time I ever pulled this bullet out to use it. Uh, I see where I tested a bunch. I've found over the years that I need to be very, very close, if not just touching or maybe just a little jammed into for most of my more accurate rifles. Um, every once in a while you find one that likes to jump, you know, 40 or 50 or 60 thousandths. And maybe that's the case here. I just don't see where I've ever done anything beyond 1.920 in my documentation. Um, who knows? Anyway, this was uh, a good start to my F-Class 
rifle set up. Um, I got some loads I need to load up, and then we can have to take them out and shoot them and see how they do. Um, all right. Um, I guess next I'll show you some uh, some of my reloading and maybe cleaning some brass and sizing some brass and and uh, seating primers, dropping powder, loading bullets. And when you load them bullets, you pull this bad boy out again because you want to make sure you're seating it right where you want it. And I'm going to have to change my settings over and over and over again to get this bad boy right where I want it. So, enough for my first day and my direction towards heading to F class. I think it's going to be a fun little adventure. Um, I'm also going to start working on, thinking on what I'm going to do. Probably going to go the 6 by 47 route. Less recoil, very accurate. And uh, I think with that short barrel I've got, I can maybe just rechamber it and still have enough barrel there to make it work. Anyway. All right, till next time, guys.